managers in professional wrestling. However, with a recent turn of events, Mr. Heenan, you may have gone a step too far. Everybody thinks they're outsmarting me. Everybody thinks they're forcing me and pushing me around. Well, first of all, tonight in Carrollton, they're going to see Killer Carl Cox tear that place apart. And tonight in Marietta, tonight, they forced me into a cage match with Bob Armstrong. Well, he's not going to bust my head open. He's not going to hurt me. Tonight, tonight, Marietta, his hometown, I'm getting rid of him. Well, indeed. Some interesting comments. And Mr. Ladd, uh... <laughs> They just see how black and blue that egg sucking dog was today. You see his head busted over his back head, a whole beat up, bruised up. Looked like he had been in a hatchet fight and everybody had a hatchet but him. But I can assure you one thing, I know he's stupid very low. He's going to the bottom of the barrel to get old Thundermire out of the barrel. A yuck, 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 a yuck, 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 a yuck, 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 a yuck, yuck, yuck. Ain't nobody going to do this. And I ain't nobody gonna do that. Well, you gonna suck eggs like old eggs that can dog in the mouth? I guarantee you bring your carcass back to your the mouth, somebody's gonna hurt you. You know what they say about your kind and my kind? We can't stand one another thunder mouth. And thunder mouth, you get out of here before I get in here because you are scared of me. And you better get out of here again because I'll hurt you for the rest of your life. You'll be crippled in the head. Sure and in the hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't want no secrets out. We don't want no secrets out because we have a little necktie party for that egg-sucking dog, and I feel sorry for you, Thundermouth, for being such a big fool to be a part of something that's going to get you hurt. Let me ask you a question. Have don't you, you... Hey, hey, you're not in this, don't we? Hey, look, we're not revealing nothing. You direct all your information to me. And get that camera and don't be trying to figure out who this gentleman is. All I know is a fine gentleman, and he gets the job done. He won't turn his back on you. He won't be like the egg-sucking dog. Lay down. Hey, hey, you camera people, don't, don't be doing it. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Well, I'd like to ask him a... Look, well, I'll tell, look, you what. tell the man to keep the camera in one place and don't go crazy. Now, what question do you want to know? Well, I wanted to ask him a question. You want to ask me a question. What do you want to ask me? No, I don't think I have any further questions for you, Mr. Ladd, or for this gentleman as far right, as that now, goes. this gentleman take care of business. We mm -hmm. take care of plenty of business. We take care of... We're going to get in the ring, mm -hmm. and we're going to take care of some plenty, plenty serious Thank things. you very much, and here's a special word of interest to all wrestling fans. Get a 320 pounds, the big cat, Ernie Ladd. <laughs> And his mystery partner, their opponent from Cartersville, Georgia, weighing in at 215 pounds, Ted Allen. His partner from Florida, Vinny Bellotto. All right, Vinny Bellotto and Ted Allen going up against Ernie the Cat Lad and uh, the mystery man. Ernie the Cat Lad moving on versus Vinny Bellotto, meeting him head on. High, high, hip toss by Lad. Lad smashing him into... Uh, the mystery man over there. Delano fighting back now. Powering away at Ernie Ladd. Caught by the mystery man once again. Ernie Ladd catches him in the pit of the stomach. Ladd moving against him very effectively. Snap mare that takes him to the canvas. Up over those ropes, and it is uh, Milano charging back at him very quickly. Lad brings him up a big bear hug. Forces him back into the far turnbuckle. Milano in trouble now is Lad. Caught him in the side of the shoulder that time. Makes the tag with Ted Allen. Allen moves in against this mystery man. And uh, they've thrown the rule book away here. All right, it's the mystery man. Ted Allen off those ropes. High, high backdrop. Allen coming up very slowly. Allen hurtled into the knee of Ernie the Cat Lad. Allen caught again. And Allen would do well to try and get over and tag up if he can. Caught him with a backbreaker. Did not allow the pin. The mystery man did not allow the pin. Brings him up again. Has the pinfall this time on Ted Allen. So the mystery man, who obviously is extremely familiar with uh, 
chains, but uh, I can't find out uh, any further information. There's a lot of conjecture as to exactly who he is. It's going to be interesting to find out who is indeed the actual Mr. Wrestling number two also. That's all the time we do have this week. Until next week, Gordon Soley saying so long from the Peach State of Georgia. <laughs>
quickly as we can. Don't forget, during our next hour, it will be the Hulk going up against Andre the Giant. And that's all the time we have for this hour. Until the next hour, Gordon Soley saying so long. As to the injuries uh, uh, on uh, Stan Frazier, he obviously has a, a jammed spine on this situation. First of all, Gordon, you know me, and the people watching this show know me and know that I am not the kind of man that goes around sticking my nose in somebody else's business. Now, I came out here last week as a commentator with you to commentate a match, and I ended up in the ring. Well, you can't stand by sometimes and watch something happen that you've seen happen time after time after time. Now, Stan Frazier and Robert Fuller have been lied to. I was lied to today on this TV program. The people watching this program have been lied to, and we are all sick of it. Last week, Stan Frazier and Robert Fuller were promised a heads-up match for the tag team titles, and Michael Hayes stuck his nose in the ring again. Today, he came out here yelling and screaming about everybody calling him Michelle and calling him a woman, and he wanted to prove to everybody that he was a man by challenging me. And who did I end up wrestling, Michael Hayes? I ended up in the ring with Terry Gordy. Now, Stan Frazier is back there with an injury that we don't know right now, Gordon. We don't know the extent of those injuries, but the man is hurt. Now, we're facing a situation, Robert and I, we have got a six-man elimination tag team match coming up, and right now we are minus one partner. We don't know what's going to happen, but I'll guarantee you, Freebirds, one thing. Something will happen. Something violent will happen. I'll tell you something. You do not climb in a snake pit with a bunch of snakes and try to fight them heads up. You get down on your belly and you crawl with them just like they are, and Robert Fuller can do it, and I can do it, and we're going to do it. There you have it, a very, very fired up Ted DiBiase, and certainly understandably so. Right now, uh, well, we're getting set to go with the balance of our program, we're going to turn to a match now of Mr. USA, the Georgia heavyweight champion, Tony Atlas. So let's take a look at uh, Tony Atlas in action, shall we? This match will be one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first from Marion, Ohio, weighing at 235 pounds, Charlie Fulton. <laughs> His opponent from Roanoke, Virginia, weighing it at 250 pounds, the Georgia heavyweight champion, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas, and look at the tremendous condition this man is in. He is uh, Mr. USA, and now the Georgia heavyweight champion, and just an outstanding athlete. And uh, for those uh, youngsters who are watching right now, may I just say that uh, he has spent hours and hours and hours and years of his life in total dedication to becoming the very, very finest in his profession, and uh, he has achieved that goal now as a Georgia heavyweight champion. So all things are possible. Head scissors, but Atlas powers out. Fulton back on his feet. All right, once again, watching each other carefully. You notice Atlas has great, great strength. And has an interesting theory, too. Uh, he'll bench press uh, anywhere from 500 to 550 pounds. And uh, he says that this uh, keeps him in, in top condition. Also, enables him to be able to press a uh, 270 or 300 pound wrestler away from him in the event that he's caught in a lateral uh, press at all. Good by uh, Atlas that time. Hooked the arm, scored the takedown. Got an interesting letter from uh, some folks in Sandusky, Ohio, uh, George and Virginia Canales, are talking about uh, the great capabilities of Tony Atlas. And of course, uh, we certainly want to say hi to all the wrestling fans in Ohio, the great Buckeye State. Back into the turnbuckle once again, the referee calling for the break. A clean break by Atlas. Atlas in the green trunks. Fulton in the red trunks. Atlas, notice that. A good to go behind a heel block and take down. Easy ride on uh, Fulton. Fulton trying to sit out and escape. Atlas just keeps the ride. Bearing down, float over. Keeping the ride once again on uh, Fulton. Fulton trying to escape. Again, Fulton trying to sit out, and uh, Atlas underhooks the arms. And uh, Fulton getting that shoulder off before the count of three, however. Tony Atlas, uh, of course, uh, is... Uh, told everyone he will be a fighting champion. He'll put that title on the line against any and all challengers. 
And I know wrestling fans uh, throughout the entire world are hopeful that Tony Atlas will keep that title for a long, long time. He is certainly a, uh, a pride and a credit to uh, professional wrestling. Bolton back to his feet. Collar and elbow, and it's Atlas Bull back into the ropes. One, two, three. On the break, it was Fulton driving his shoulder to the midsection of Tony Atlas. Caught him with a uh, hard, jarring forearm to the side of the jaw. Another one has Atlas in a bit of trouble here on the ropes. Fulton now with a snap mare into a rear chin lock on Tony Atlas. Later on in the program, of course, we'll be seeing Ted DiBiase. Also, Ole Anderson is scheduled to wrestle here today. Anderson, of course, out of the uh, Golden Gopher State of Minnesota. And it is uh, Fulton maintaining that uh, rear chin lock on Tony Atlas and Atlas on that canvas. Atlas number one is going to have to battle his way out of the situation and then uh, figure his next move or counter move. Atlas is now trying to turn into uh, Charlie Fulton. Fulton blocked that. And again, Fulton brings him down to the canvas. So Tony Atlas has his problems now. Now Tony Atlas on one knee. And it is Fulton clamping down again, even more pressure, and uh, Atlas drives an elbow on the side of the ribcage, another elbow. Finally, of course, to the right hand, and, uh, ooh, Atlas caught on the side of the jaw, but Atlas whistles in two, and then two more punches to the sides of the jaw of uh, Charlie Fulton, driving it back to the canvas. Atlas brings a full power slam. Body slam, rather. Using that elbow very effectively, Fulton with a headbutt. Atlas overhooks the head. Back into the uh, turnbuckle once again. And it's Fulton now using those forearms very effectively. Full body slam by Charlie Fulton. Fulton coming off those ropes. Atlas rolls out of the way just in time. Fulton coming down on the side of his hip that is Atlas bringing him up. And here's exactly what I'm talking about. Pressing Fulton high above his head. A full slam, a count of three. A count of three and it is all over. Any explanation whatsoever. I'll tell you something. It's a shame when people can't heed advice. It's a shame when people don't listen to a warning that's heated towards them. And that's just what happened. Let me tell you something, man. The elimination is already started. Because nobody comes messing with us. We're not like other wrestlers come out here bragging and boasting just because they're on TV. When we say something, we carry it out. And there were three, and now there were two. Well, and there me... ain't but one thing left to do. Well, let me tell you something right now then what? if I may. Mr. Hayes. First of all, I've been in contact with promoter Paul Jones, and he has already decided this fact, that in an elimination tag team match, if you ended up being the last man in the ring, that you obviously wouldn't stay in the ring. Why not? Well, it's obvious by what you've done on television and everything else that you're not the kind to stay in a ring. Now, I've asked Ron West also to talk to uh, Mr. Paul Jones. And uh, what, 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 I expect to hear from him momentarily regarding... What, what, excuse me, Gordon. I just got through talking to Mr. Paul Jones, and these are the list of the names that will be the Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks? What for? What do we need Lumberjacks for? Hey, listen, if you're wor if you're worried about us getting a hold of them and, and not beating them severely enough to where they can run out of the ring, then we'd need them. But I guarantee you that we'll beat them so bad they won't be able to run out of the ring. Well, I'll tell you what. Thursday night at the Omni in Atlanta in the six-man elimination match, the Freebirds going up against Frazier, DiBiase, and Robert Fuller. These are the Lumberjacks that'll surround the ring. Steve Kern, Steve O, Terry Taylor, Joe LaDuke, Tony Atlas, Jerry Roberts, Jerry Briscoe, and Tom Stepp. Hey, I told you, don't push us. Christmas will not come because we're going to get Fuller and DiBiase because Frazier's gone. <laughs>
But I needed a workout this afternoon, and I think I got it. Gordon, I'd like to say one thing, and I'm going to direct this to a former friend of mine, Tony Atlas. Tony, even your people know I have more soul than you. You're shucking and jiving, Tony. Let me tell you, Tony, I can fish better than you, I can fight better than you, and I can even play basketball better than you, Tony Atlas. I can do anything better than you, because you know you taught me a lot of things, and I never let on to you, Tony Atlas, anything, because sometimes I think you have an IQ of a rutabaga. So, Tony Atlas, you know, you can show all your muscles, but I don't think you're any bigger than mine. I don't think you're any stronger than me. And I know one thing, Tony Atlas, your people, your people know you got no soul because the soul comes from the heart and you don't have it. Well, I'll tell you what, before we go any farther, Mr. Sullivan, I think you would be very interested in hearing some comments previously recorded by Tony Atlas. So let's, uh, let's give a listen to these comments from Mr. USA. Well, when it comes to Kevin Sullivan, Tony Atlas certainly, I'm sure, has some well-chosen words. Well, you know, me and Kevin Sullivan, we were Georgia tag team champions and everything in the past. And Kevin Sullivan was a kind of man that I kind of trusted a great deal. You know, Kevin Sullivan, the whole time that me and Kevin was together, Kevin always used to ask me things when we went to the match. And he said, Tony, how you lift a man over your head like this? So I said, Kevin, I do it this way. I said, you always do like this and that and that and that and that. And that. Kevin said, uh-huh, that's good. And sometimes he asked me, he said, Tony, how come every time a man lock hands with you? It's because your hands is stronger than his, the reason you always take him down to his knees? And I said, no, Kevin. I said, because it's a technique to it, just like arm wrapping, weight lifting, everything else. And Kevin said, uh-huh. And he was taking all this in. So the next thing I know, I done told Kevin Sullivan three-fourths of all the knowledge that I have learned in my whole 25 years of living. And Kevin Sullivan never expressed anything to me about his ability. So when I go into the ring against Kevin Sullivan, there's very little that I know about Kevin Sullivan. There's a great deal that he know about me. But in the Omni, Kevin Sullivan, there's one thing that I know about you. I know you can't be trusted. I know you're a low-down, good-for-nothing, dirty dog. And Kevin Sullivan, I know one thing else, too, brother. Now, I might not know everything about you, but I know that I will whip you as long as I can keep up with you and get paid for it. So, Kevin Sullivan, bring yourself on to the Omni, brother. If you think that I don't know nothing about you, I know one thing, Kevin Sullivan, I can fight you all night long. Tony Atlas, let me tell you something. Christian State and the immortal words of Southside Band, there's four things you don't do in this world. The first is you don't tug on Superman's cape. The second thing is you don't spit in the wind. The third thing is you don't pull the mask off the Lone Ranger. And the fourth thing is you don't mess around with a battle. I'm going to get you. I was known uh, the world over as the Canadian freight train. I'm referring, of course, to Joe LaDuc. And uh, Mr. LaDuc has returned to the state of Georgia. That's right, Gordon. I've been coming to the state of Georgia because Georgia championship wrestling has become a very interesting and very powerful in the wrestling world. And I've traveled all over the world, and I've come here because there's a lot of money to be given. There's a lot of prime prize. And like everybody else, I like money, and I like to be on top. I like to be number one. That's why I'm here. Well, I'll tell you something. In a moment, we're going to see something that uh, they talk about various programs and talk about things being incredible. What we're going to see in just a moment that this man does is, in my opinion, absolutely.